Hey guys, James Griner here with Waterford Business Solutions, and today we're going to continue our discussion about projects within QuickBooks Online, and specifically focus on tracking our expenses in QuickBooks Online. Previously, we've talked about creating the project and adding income to it, <clears throat> and today we're specifically going to look at expenses. For those of y'all that watched the adding income video, this one is going to follow very similar to that because adding income and adding expenses is very similar, just a slight different area. Um, so if we come in here, this is the project that we've created, <clears throat> and here's the transaction list that shows all the income that we've gone ahead and added to this project. At this point, I want to start adding expenses. So adding expenses is going to be done under this vendor's area for any and all expenses here. Anything you do here can end up being associated with the project, just like the income. Purchase orders, vendor credits, pay bills, a bill, stuff like that, all that goes in. So I'm going to kind of walk through the entire process of the most complicated thing, um, which is going to be purchasing, again, the example that I'm using for mine is an HVAC company, but purchasing an HVAC unit for that company there, and we need to send the company a purchase order and then they send us a bill so that purchase order gets turned into a bill and then we need to pay that bill and so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to start with the purchase order. We're going to choose the vendor that this is going to. And I don't have this vendor in here so we'll have to put it in there. We're going to tell them that we want to ship it to um, we can choose where we want to ship it to. It's going to naturally be our address, but if we want to actually ship it to the project site, we can go ahead and choose to ship it to there. Um, there is no address associated with that project, so it's not going to change that shipping address there. We can choose the shipping via anything like that. Um, we can choose our PO number. Generally, our PO number is going to be a variant of the invoice number with maybe in a dash one or an A or something like that so that we can track every single PO associated with it because for some people you can have 5, 10, 20 POs for one project. So we want to have some PO tracking method here. Um, if you've got a permit, we can put a permit on here just so that you have that there. And then we're going to come down here to product and service. Now, if you are tracking inventory, that's when you're gonna use item details in your product and service. I personally, in this account, am not currently tracking inventory, so I wouldn't be using the item details, I'd be using the category details. And that category is going to line up with something in my chart of accounts. The item details, you're gonna to have to add an item to be associated with, um, a product and service to track it in your inventory and then associate that product and service to a category in your chart of accounts. Absolutely that's possible to do but it does get a little bit complicated so unless you're really tracking inventory I tend to just use the category details up here. So we'll use that category detail and we're going to say that it's job supplies. And we got a job expenses but maybe I want this to be a cost of goods sold because this is a direct um, expense or direct, ex direct purchase for this job. So I'm going to choose cost of goods sold for this. And then we're going to go ahead and come in here and give a description of what it is. So we're getting a 5 ton 10 sear model A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and then anything else that we want to give train so that they know exactly what we're buying here. And then we know from train that it's going to cost us $3,500 for that unit. Um, now this is where the important part comes in because overall so far we've done a standard purchase order. Where this is going to change is for our customer and project here, we are going to choose our project here. Because if we don't choose the project, it's not going to associate with the project. If we don't choose, if we end up choosing the customer instead of the project, again, it's not going to associate with the project. It's only going to be associated with the customer. So we're going to go ahead and choose our project, not our customer, but our project, to assign it to that project. We'll put in anything and everything else that they need to know. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and save and send this to train. Now I don't have an email in here, so it's not gonna to go to anybody. So I'm just gonna save it. Now that we've saved that, we can come back to our project here and we can see our purchase order right there. Purchase order's there, $3,500, perfect. Once we go ahead and refresh the screen though, we still notice, because as I talked about in the last video, sometimes the costs and the income aren't gonna show up immediately. Sometimes you need to refresh. So once we refresh, we still see that there is no cost associated with that. And the reason that there is no cost associated with that is because just like an estimate, a purchase order is just putting in the request to purchase something. It's not an actual bill, it's nothing like that. So until we come to this purchase order and we tell it that we wanna copy it to a bill, and it copies everything over for us, including the customer and project, and we choose our terms, let's say that they give us a net 60 due date, yada, 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 put in the bill number that they give us, um, anything that we need there, because they're not gonna have the bill number. If you don't set up the terms under the vendor, then the terms aren't going to apply automatically. Um, so we won't be able to copy some of that. So there will still be some tweaking you have to do on the bill. But then we can go ahead and save this. And we can do several things here. We can save, or we can save and schedule payment. Save and schedule payment is actually a new feature because QuickBooks is now partnered very closely with bill.com where you can save a bill and schedule the payment all through QuickBooks Online, which is very nice. And we can talk about that feature at a later date. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now, we can go ahead and come in here, and we're gonna see that the purchase order is closed and that we now have a bill here that is open. Well, with that bill here, we're gonna refresh, and now we'll see costs associated here and it's gonna start affecting our profit margin, which is perfect, that's what we wanna see happen. So now we've gone ahead and included that. Now if we go ahead and pay the bill, and we come up here and say, okay, we're paying train, and we're using check 401 on today, and then we go ahead and save that check. We come back here to the transactions. Might need to refresh this. And it's gonna show us, it was already there, sorry about that. It is gonna go ahead and show us that that bill is already paid. Now the bill payment doesn't show up here, but it does give us a status that the bill is paid. From there, we can come in and let's say that we have just some standard expenses. We go to Lowe's and we have to purchase some stuff. So we go to Lowe's. And we choose that we pay by credit card um, and we want to go ahead and have a reference number of our project here. That way we know what's going on there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just come in here and again choose cost of goods sold and put in what we purchased. So we purchased duct tape, um, we purchased some screws, let's put an S there, we purchased some, um, Duct straps. And other. So we just purchased a bunch of random stuff from Lowe's. We can come in here and put in an amount that we had $500 there and that it was taxed. We don't want it, if we do tax and billable, one thing to keep in mind here is if you choose the tax, it's going to automatically make it billable because it's basically choosing that this expense is going to be taxable to the customer. So if you don't want to make it billable, don't click the tax here. Go ahead and just put in the total amount here, including tax. So $500, just to keep it simple, it's going to be our total amount, including tax. And remember, it's very important that we choose our customer or project here. If we don't choose that, then it's not going to be associated with the project. So we'll go ahead and save and close that. And then we'll go ahead and see that expense pop up there. And we now see, again, we need to refresh the page to get this accurate. But if we refresh it, we'll see that our total cost is now at 
$5,000 or $4,000, not $3,500. And then we end up needing to write a check to, um, let's say we're writing a check to, the bank for, because this customer financed their job. So we have to pay the bank back for those financing fees. So this is gonna be customer finance fees, which is again, not an account that I have in here. So we're just gonna add that real quick. Um, always when you're adding stuff, be a little bit more detailed than what I did there. Um, I've gone over that previously, how that's important. And we'll get in here and explain what these are for, that this is consumer Then we'll come in and for an amount, we will put in that it was $150 there. Again, choose our project. And one thing to keep in mind here is depending on the bank that you're using, you they may pull this out of the payment that they're sending you instead of um, you having to pay them back. Most banks do that. I'm just using this as an example. If the bank pulls it out of the payment that they give you, then you need to track this differently. Okay, so now we've got that in there. So we've got a few different expenses. Now let's say somewhere along the lines, Train gives us a rebate for that machine. So we end up getting a vendor credit. So Train comes back to us. And gives us a $500 credit. Not 5,000, 500. And we know that it's specifically for invoice, um, for that invoice, I forget the exact invoice number, so I'm gonna kind of guess at it. Um, but we know it's specifically for that invoice. So we can actually mark it to that customer there and assign that right there for $500. Again, if we mark it to that customer, it's going to go against our project. So we're gonna go ahead, save and close that. And what that's gonna do there is, A, it's gonna provide us a credit for future use um, on a bill but it's also going to apply that credit specifically to this job because we know that that credit was for this job. Since we applied it to that job, if we go ahead and refresh this page, we're gonna see how our cost went down to 36.50 instead of 41.50. So that's going through and adding expenses. Again, it's fairly straightforward and fairly easy, just like the income, you go through and do everything the same as you normally would. The only difference is you come in and you make sure that you're choosing the project as your customer on every expense. When you do that, it's gonna give you a breakdown of where your expenses went here. Consumer financing fees, cost of goods sold. It'll help you get your profit margin up here. And we'll go into a little bit more on some of the stuff that's going to um, show up here as we keep going in because we've got a few more videos that I wanna hit on. As always, guys, it's been a wonderful time. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to give us a call or shoot us an email. And we would love to help you out there.